Alright, hi there guys. So, I finally managed to get round to doing a guitar lesson. I don't know why it's taken me so long, but I've just been thinking about what's the best way to do it, then overcomplicated it and worried about just, oh, would this, this be better? But, key point is, like you guys, you beginner players are going to find, the key with it is not to overcomplicate stuff. It's to keep it simple and just actually do the damn thing. So in the case of playing guitar, you want to do some really basic stuff, and just actually put your hands on the instrument. You don't need to, like I was worried, just yeah, have a set out plan of progression and stuff. Just start and move on. So what you need to do as beginner players, you know, I assume you're a beginner if you're watching this. It's probably going to be called beginner guitar lesson. But yeah, what you need to do, there are some fundamental basic skills you need to learn. The first thing is learning to fret open chords. That's what they're called, which is the chords you find down here as opposed to chords like this type that you find up and down the neck. You need to learn to strum with the right hand, and then you need to learn to do the two things in time together. Ideally in time to a piece of music, or a drum beat, or something like that. We're not going to complicate it too much, because like I say, the main point is for you guys to just get your hands on the instrument and start practicing. Because the main bit that you have to learn is that it takes time to build up the ability to play the guitar. Even to do simple stuff, like I'm about to demo something, I'll say yeah, this is the basic dead easy stuff. You'll probably struggle with it to begin with, you know, and I, I semi-recently started playing guitar with my left hand to remind, you know, remind myself what it's like for a beginner player. And yeah, it's hard. Even with all the knowledge and the experience, it's still hard to build it up. You've got to be consistent. So start with small amounts because you're going to wear the tips of your fingers out doing it if you're brand new to this. They take time to toughen up. So on that note, we're going to start with two basic open chords. They're in the key of G major for whatever it, you know, whatever it means to you. I'm just saying it now so that you'll have a vague idea what it is later on. But yeah, so you're playing a G major chord, which looks like that. Now, a lot of people suggest, and uh, forgive me if it's not zoomed in particularly well. I know that's not great, but you know, I'm doing the best I can with it. But yeah, I'll have it written down below what the tabs are for it and stuff like that. Or I can send you a picture of it. I don't know, whatever, we'll sort it. So yeah. I want you to play it with all four fingers. Most teachers play it like that, or they'll tell you to play it with three. Which is a slightly different sound. First of all, I prefer the sound of it like that, and it sounds better with a big rock amp and stuff like that for reasons of tuning, which we will go into later. You know, intonation and equal temperament versus just leonitate, all this stuff. We'll get to it later, don't worry about it. But yeah, so I want you to play it like that, mainly because you're going to work all four of the fingers. Which to have something nice and simple and quick and to the point that you can practice just a couple of minutes a day, this is brilliant. It will toughen up all four of the fingers nicely. And yeah, you'll be better prepared for work with the uh, little finger later on. Which if you want to get into lead stuff, it's going to be important. And all sorts of special advanced type chords. You know, a basic seven. But yeah. So anyway, I'm overcomplicating this like hell. What I want you, basically, the end goal of what I want you to work towards with this is to be able to do this. And to get that to sound smooth and together will take some time. And that's fine. Again, the idea is to train some basic skills into yourselves that you can build from. So, if you've got your guitar handy, we're going to learn a G chord. Well, we. You guys are. So, first of all, take your, uh, can't remember the names of the fingers, your swearing finger. Put that on the third fret, on the bottom string. And when we talk in terms of uh, bottom or top strings, we mean in terms of thickness and pitch. So the bottom string is the lowest one. As opposed to... So, and the third fret, the frets are these metal things. They're the bits that you pull the string down across to actually make a note. So a third is one, two, three. Put your finger just behind it. And ideally you want to get your fingers as close to the frets as you can. It makes your playing more efficient. You'll have to put less effort in to fret it. If you fret them back here in front of the fret before, you'll have to push more to get it to come out. And it will tend to come out buzzy and ruined. So yeah, get your fingers as close as you can. And I'll do a video on just basic tips, you know, things to focus on when you're practicing. But yeah, so, third finger, bottom string, sorry, swearing finger, third fret, bottom string. Next, 
you want to get your first finger, pointer finger, whatever the technical term is, put it on the second fret on the fifth string. That's the string just above the lowest one, so you get this. And my guitar's a bit out of tune, I think. I'm not gonna bother trying to tune it, I'll make it worse, I'm sure. Okay, the next two strings you leave open. So you got this so far. Which is fine. And then you take your third finger and your fourth finger. You put them both on the third fret. On the uh, second string, or B string. And the top string, the E string. So you get that. So you put the whole thing together. Again, swearing finger. You know, I'm sure there's a name for it. I can never remember. I don't know why. Index finger, whatever. But yeah. Third fret, bottom string. First finger, second fret, fifth string. Next two are open. And then third and fourth fingers on the third fret. On the fifth and sixth string. Sorry, got that wrong. First and second. <laughs> I'm not good at these, I'm new to them. But yeah, so you get this. So that's your G chord. I want you to try holding that, try fretting it efficiently, get your fingers as close as you can towards the fret, and play it. Try to get it to sound clear. Make sure that you're actually pressing down with the tips of your fingers downward on the guitar. You probably can't see it too well. But yeah, you want it downward on it, not sort of across it, like that, sort of flattening down on it, because you will get blunted notes. You'll get this, which is no good. You want them all ringing very clearly, so pick them slowly, just as slow as you need to do it. You know, it doesn't matter what speed you're comfortable with. Any speed you start at is good. You will get quicker over time as you get more comfortable. So, again, G chord. Third finger. Third fret with the swearing finger. I'm no good as a guitar teacher, am I? First finger, second fret. Two middle strings are open, and the third and fourth fingers on the third fret. On the... F I'm doing it again. First and second strings. So yeah. Okay. So, that's the first chord. The second one is an E minor chord, which is the relative minor of G major. Same key. It all makes sense later on. I'm just planting the seeds for the theory now, because it does help. You don't need theory to be a good musician. Certainly not in pop and rock anyway. But it does help. So anyway. I want you to play this chord, your G chord. And then I want you to move from that to this. So you take all of the fingers off except for your first finger. So you've just got the second fret on the fifth string playing. And then you take your swearing finger, put it on the string above it, on the second fret, so on the fourth string. You get that sound. If I can move my fingers out of the way to show you. There you go. So again, from that, take them off and put it on. As quickly and smoothly as you can. And that's it. That's all I want you to do for the beginning. There's more open chords for you to learn, but they'll come quite naturally if you just toughen up the calluses on your fingers so that you can practice for longer periods. Do a couple of minutes a day. As a beginner, you're going to be passionate. You're going to be excited. You're going to, yeah, learn this, get it out of the way, get on with the good stuff. And that's fair enough, you know, nothing wrong with that. But you will tend to overdo it if you do go in there gung-ho with all the passion raging. And then you'll have to have days off waiting for the fingers to recover. Believe me, I know, it bloody hurts. And yeah, that will kill your motivation. So my advice, just do a few minutes practice every day. Or every other day, whatever you're comfortable with. Whatever speed you're comfy with. <laughs> Practicing those two chords. And the main point is I want you to transition between them smoothly. So my advice is strum down. Strum up. With an upstroke, what's called the technical term. And do the same with the other chord. So go to your E minor. And then back. As slow as you need to do it. Even if it takes hours, you're fine. Well, like I said, only a couple of minutes practice a day.
So yeah, that's it. And eventually I want you to build up to be able to strum more strums for it, but I think I'll do another introductory lesson where the idea is you play it to, you know, a beat. Some actual beats with bars in it, which is another technical term you'll get, just... Like that. I want you to be able to strum to it. That's the end goal. So, that's about it. Work on those, toughen up your fingers, get the feel for it, get comfortable changing between them and strumming a bit, moving your hands together. You'll be fine. That'll be a good base to build from for learning the rest of the stuff. Because like I say, it's not worth overcomplicating things in the beginning. You just need to get your hands on the instrument moving. But that's it. I hope this is useful to you. I hope this is a good first, you know, lesson. Yeah. Let me know what other stuff I can cover for you. You know, what other things you want to know. So yeah, best of luck guys, catch you next video. Bye.